Thank you, Marco. Thanks for having me. Hello, everyone. My name is Florian. I'm CEO of Volocopter, and I'm going to introduce to you the future of urban air mobility. Now, let me see how this uh, works. OK, here we go. So the fact that we are seeing major traffic challenges in cities across the world probably doesn't come as news to you. Um, however, we've studied the implications of that, and we've found that you know, building ever more infrastructure really doesn't solve any of those problems. Uh, speak to people in Los Angeles about their experiences. They are now calling Arm Carmageddon. Um, you will see that um, you know, any kind of additional infrastructure that we put in place is instantly being fed up by additional um, cars on the road. And what was very interesting for us to find is also that the promise of autonomous cars will not provide a solution to the congestion topic either, because the efficiency gains that we expect to see from autonomous driving cars will instantly be overcompensated by the sheer miles that those cars will be traveling on the roads. So apparently, autonomous driving is not going to solve that problem either. And this is exactly the reason why cities everywhere in the world are actively looking for solutions, and for that, they also look to the sky. We at Volocopter will bring urban air taxi services to cities across the world. And we do that in a very pragmatic and partnership-oriented way. I will dive into the topic of pragmatic in a second. Um, and highlight the partnership aspect of it. So we are, for years, we've been very intensively working with regulatory authorities worldwide, with city officials, and also with private companies to establish the necessary prerequisites to get started with such air taxi services. We are talking to infrastructure developers. We are talking to um, companies providing technology for next generation air traffic management, because that's going to pose a major challenge as well. We are talking to telecommunication providers implementing 5G technology, because that will be a massive enabler for the scaling of our services, and so on. So the list goes on. We intend to be a part of the operation of fleets of ultimately fully autonomous volocopters, but we do not intend to do that against the official um, authorities, and we do, not, we do intend to partner with local partners, and also industry partners, wherever that makes sense. And we've come pretty far already in setting up the required ecosystem to start implementing our services. Now, when I say pragmatic, what do I mean by that? Once we have the necessary prerequisites in place, for example, the next generation air traffic management, we can start as humble as putting up a point-to-point route going from, for example, here, John F. Kennedy Airport in New York, offering an air taxi service into lower Manhattan. All we need from an infrastructure perspective is we need a 15 by 15 square meter concrete surface, flat surface, that we are allowed to land and process the volocopter in. This is what I mean by pragmatic. We don't need massive infrastructure requirements in order to get started. Now, obviously, this would be a humble beginning for something that has the potential to grow into a massive transformation of the cities as we experience them today. So leading up from that, these initially isolated point-to-point -point routes will be interconnected into entire networks covering whole city surfaces. And with that, we see the potential to implement an entirely new mode of transportation offering a new alternative to travelers uh, within urban agglomerations across the world. We even go as far as to say, in a future where we will see vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, vehicle-to-x, vehicle-to-infrastructure communication, or you know, the broader internet of things, we find it absolutely feasible to be able to offer on-demand ports. What we mean by that is any parking lot close to you ultimately we'll be able to be transformed into a landing spot for a volocopter dynamically for the duration of three minutes. So you are able to be picked up very close to your original starting point of the trip you want to make. And then after it has picked you up, it can be retransformed into a conventional parking lot. This is how ubiquitous we believe this service can be. 
and we intend to implement that. Now, when looking at such networks of operations, we found that at some points there will be more demand than at others, and how do we get the necessary capacity in order to actively process sufficient amounts of vehicles and persons uh, on a given day? And this is why, about two months ago, we published our concept of a Volo Hub. Now, think of a Volo Hub in terms of a ski lift, right? You have a landing pad, an entry point, where Volocopters arrive at a very frequent, uh, a very high frequency, leading all the way up to every 30 seconds we could process a Volocopter in such a design, then being entered into a flowing process where they're being handled accordingly. Just as you know from a ski lift logic, processes are slowed down once you're part of that uh, flowing system. You have all the time in the world you need to relax and uh, get out of the vehicle. The batteries will be automatically swapped for fully recharged batteries, and then you can, again, board your next vehicle and um, you know, take off from the opposite line um, helipad. With such hubs centered at the strategic bottleneck points of our entire system, we can build a meaningful mode of transportation um, in the very near future. As I mentioned earlier, we don't need that at the outset. This is certainly stage number two. But again, this offers the opportunity to come to meaningful capacity with such a new mode of transportation. Now, why are we so confident, and why am I standing here and telling you this is a new mode of transport and it's going to come? Because we have consistently met a number of very meaningful milestones uh, over the course of the past seven years. When our founders set out in 2010, they had the idea of how do I scale up such a very simple-to-fly toy drone into something meaningful that can actually be used to transport people. And ever since then, ever since Thomas stepped onto that most famous yoga ball in aviation history in 2011, people all across the world have seen what potential this holds. Right? This has been the first time that distributed electric propulsion was actually performed uh, in a matter of proof of concept um, to, to, to the entire world. And we have gotten a lot of attention from everywhere on that uh, initial stunt. It took us two years to fly a meaningful prototype in 2013. We brought it all the way to a first meaningful certification by German aviation authorities in 2016 with our Generation 1 Volocopter. We've repeated that certification process just recently with our Generation 2 Volocopter, which is exactly the vehicle that you can see outside of the Tempo Drome. So if you're uh, interested, you know, feel free to stop by and um, even sit in. Um, so we are on a very clear track towards certification. On top of that, we were invited by the city of Dubai to perform the first ever autonomous flight of such an air taxi vehicle in September of last year. So the flight you see here, there was no human interference on that, not a pilot on board and not a remote pilot involved in it, because Dubai is very actively embracing the concept of an autonomous air taxi, which obviously will then uh, you know, transform the economics of offering such a service going forward. Another meaningful milestone we hit was uh, earlier this year when uh, one of our shareholders, CEO, uh, Intel CEO, Brian Krizanich, was the first ever non-test pilot being flown in a Volocopter. Um, so he came to visit, and uh, we made him the first ever passenger in a Volocopter ride. Uh, we showcased that during his uh, keynote presentation at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. And we are now getting ready for routine operations. So why now and why the Volocopter? And um, the reason for that is that we had to wait for recent technology advancements in order to build the Volocopter. And the Volocopter today features all the characteristics that we require in order to adopt such a technology, such an application at scale. The two predominant prerequisites being unprecedented levels of safety, um, the safety track record of helicopters simply would not be sufficient today to be operating at scale. So, and when I mean operating at scale, I mean thousands of vehicles in a given city. 
um, based on the redundancy concept that is very obvious in the mechanical layout and the propulsion uh, layout that we have for the Volocopter, which only represents the tip of the iceberg that you can actually see in terms of our safety philosophy that we apply for it, makes it very feasible to complete the commercial certification process anywhere in the next two to three years. The second most important prerequisite we believe must be met is extremely no noise. If we are too loud, people will never, citizens of a city will never accept the broad adoption of such a technology, and therefore this is extremely important. Any kind of vehicle that we want to fly over populated areas must meet stringent noise requirements. Those are not put in place yet, so we are cooperating with NASA efforts, for example, to actually put a precise metric to it, but everybody in the industry would not contest that the Volocopter is the noise benchmark. Um, of any kind of innovative vehicles that you might see out there. Obviously, the Volocopter is extremely simple to fly. Um, it has a single joystick that can intuitively be managed by anyone. I always claim a five-year-old can be sitting inside the Volocopter and fly it instantly. You don't need any piloting skills. You just need to know what direction you want to put the joystick in, and the Volocopter will perform the task. So it's extremely simple. In fact, for us, it was an additional burden to put in a joystick into that vehicle because by DNA, it's a scaled-up drone. So flying remotely controlled or even fully autonomous is something that comes totally natural to the Volocopter, as already demonstrated with that flight uh, in Dubai. Obviously, the last step towards 100% autonomy would then be full sense and avoid capabilities on board the vehicle, which is something where the car industry is making great advancements, and we are directly benefiting from the advancement that they're doing there, namely by our cooperation with Intel and also Daimler, who are both um, shareholders in our company. Last but not least, manufactured and operated at scale, there's no reasons why volocopters should be more expensive than cars, respectively ordering a cab ride. So the potential at scale is absolutely there for any one of us to be able to pull out our smartphone, order the Volocopter if it's the right vehicle and the right mode of transport you want to use for any given situation, to hop in and then just simply pay for the flight that you're doing. As a result of that, we intend to cooperate with our partners to actually operate autonomous, ultimately autonomous, uh, fleets of Volocopters uh, inside cities. So, the message is that the implementation of such a completely new mode of transport is much closer than most people think. We have already shown that we can get extremely stringent air aviation certification for such a vehicle, providing the safety of it. We have shown that we can operate the vehicle extremely um, quiet and emission-free. So we are very much looking forward to routine operations, and we intend to demonstrate higher numbers of vehicles across cities uh, in the course of next year. So next time you're sitting in a traffic jam and you're totally annoyed by the situation, look up to the sky and be fully aware that uh, relief is coming and the Volocopter is much closer than most people may think. Thank you very much for your attention.